All right, so welcome to the, the webinar, the October webinar. Um, I actually had a, a completely different webinar planned, um, uh, but we have been um, finding out that, uh, believe it or not, we may have been making a mistake for a little bit. I know it's shocking that, that we do make mistakes. Um, and we wanted to get you guys on board to the most up-to-date way of, of assessing uh, for this thing called hemipelvis. Um, and actually, there's a little bit of leg length that we're going to talk about as well. Um, that, and actually, I'm going to go through a little bit of a tutorial. Um, and I'm going to do my best to, to keep all the questions answered. Um, so if I don't get to you right away, I will will be working on that um, and try to get you. There I am flying solo tonight. So uh, if we could, I'm going to go ahead and just um, get started on this uh, and, and get you guys, I think, some tools to do a better job and a more accurate job of assessing for leg length inequality and uh, hemipelvis because this, we feel like those are really important things and we feel like you want to be as accurate as you possibly can with this. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so first, kind of a quick review. What, what is small hemipelvis? Um, this is straight out of Travell's uh, chapter four of the, quad, the Quadratus Lumborum section of volume number two. Um, and, and you'll see this is her kind of description of a small hemipelvis, um, that one hemisphere of the innominate bones, right, your two innominate bones here, um, that one is you know, structurally larger than the other. And what she's showing here in figure A is that the left one is larger than the right one. Um, she puts a little book under the right cheek there, uh, evens them out, spine straightens out, um, person is much more comfortable. If you put the book on the other side, it makes the curve even worse, kind of showing that. There is such thing as an anterior to posterior small hemipelvis. A little bit harder to see on the diagram here, but basically the person's lying down and there is a structural difference from A to P. This is much more rare in our experience um, and really only affects them in a lying down position. It doesn't, uh, and most people don't lie completely flat on their back. So it's only for a few people that we end up actually correcting for this uh, down here. So that's just a, a quick review uh, of what's going on there. Uh, let's jump in. So here's an example of a pretty easy uh, hemipelvis to calculate. Um, this is a, a pretty traditional, the, the, you'll see this person is showing about a three millimeter leg length inequality. Um, the ischial tuberosities, these two little points that you sit on down here at the bottom, are measuring perfectly even with no, no height difference between the two. Um, and then as we go up to the crest of the ilium, you're going to see there's a, about a 7.1 millimeter difference. Now, what we would have said normally, uh, anybody want to tell me what the the hemipelvis is, the small hemipelvis, and on this particular person? You can raise your hand. I'll just call on you real quick. Give me a guess. Anything? You know, somebody knows. Uh, there's a hand. I knew we'd get that. Uh, Greg Young. Now, looking at the film, the uh, left side of the screen is the left ilium? The left side of the screen is the right ilium. So the right ilium is smaller? By? 7.1 millimeters. Okay, good. That's, that's exactly what we've been doing, so that's perfect. Um, pretty easy because it's 7 up higher on one side and 0 on the other side. Um, all is good there, right? Everybody get that? I know I can't hear you, but you can say it out loud as if I could hear you. That that makes you feel better. Um, if you again, if you do have a question, there's a hand button. Just make sure you raise your hand. I, I will be paying attention to that as much as I can. Uh, I still can't see all of you at once. I'm still working on that just a bit. Uh, there we go. All right. So I'm going to give an example uh, number two. So let's go ahead and check out example number two. A little more complicated. This guy's obviously a, a much bigger leg length inequality. Um, 
a 19 millimeter leg length inequality. Uh, this is actually a guy who helped us learn this lesson. Um, so what you'll see, right, 19 millimeters of leg length inequality, 34 millimeters of difference at the crest of the ilium, and 9 millimeter difference at the ischial tuberosity. Um, so someone other than Greg, uh, anyone want to uh, do a quick calculation here and tell me what they think the small hemipelvis measurement is on this particular person? Ah, first hand I saw, Marion Chin. Um, I would say 25 millimeters on the right ilium is smaller. 25 millimeters on the right ilium, and how did you get that, Marianne? Well, we see at the top of the ilium it says 34. I rounded it off to 34. Sure, I'll and, take it 34. And at the on the left side, I rounded it off to nine. Okay. And subtracted the two difference the difference between the two because of the. And, um, because they're, on the same side, they're high on the same side, so you subtract yes. it. Yes. Yep, good. Yes. And you got 25. Yes. Okay, good. That's exactly how we taught you how to do it, and it's completely wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, and it's completely wrong. So that's why we're here. That's why it's so important that we do this webinar, because we, we have recognized the fact that um, that is not the right way in which to measure this. Um, and... I'm going to give you guys all a tool in which you can use to do it properly uh, tonight is, is my goal. Um, we have a very simple webinar tonight and very clear. It's just about getting this right, <laughs> okay? Um, because we feel like it is that important because this is a guy who helped us learn this lesson. Um, we put him into a 24 millimeter is what we ended up doing, um, ischial lift, and had him sit on that, and it made him way too high. And we're like, wait a second, why is that, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm um, going to show you here first. Let me drop down here real quick. Um, write this down or copy this or screenshot it or do whatever you got to do to remember this piece. Um, this, this software called Radiant <laughs> um, is a free you can just download it off the web kind of software to read any kind of what's called a DICOM. You see it's a DICOM, D-I-C-O-M, DICOM viewer. Um, all of your MRIs and your x-rays and things like that are DICOM images. Um, and so, so those images uh, are the ones that you're going to get on the disks if they come as a disk. Um, if it comes as a straight film, you're going to need a little bit of this, uh, you're going to have to remember your geometry, <laughs> uh, which is why I put this up here. Uh, the, uh, anybody know the name of this, this formula down here? Uh, anyone raise their hand? Anybody remember geometry? See, I knew. I knew Greg would answer all the questions. Greg? Mm. Uh, Pythagorean theorem. That I'm is exactly sure. right, Greg. You win the golden prize. Um, <laughs> Pythagorean theorem. You remember ninth grade? That, that's awesome. Um, uh, uh, ten, tenth grade at my tenth school. Grade. We we were behind. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but but tenth grade was was still a, a couple of years ago. So I'm glad that you know it's just because you recently graduated. Probably is why you remember it so well. Um, but, but yes, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? And, and so you're going to have to do a little bit of a calculation if you're doing it on an actual film. If you can get this free online software, which I just happened to stumble upon, um, if you can get that going, uh, then the, it's much easier for you to analyze this and do it properly. So what I'm going to do, we're going to jump out of this real quick, um, and I want to pull up that same guy, our example number two, there he is, um, and this is a, the actual film. Now you can see I'm using the, the Radiant, Tycom, Viewer, blah, 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 um, the, and when we got this, one of the things we got was we looked at the tools that it had 
And there's some length tools and ellipse tools and pencil tools and angle tools and cob angle tools, which are great. They're, by the way, the cob angle is great for scoliosis stuff. Um, but this tool right here called deviation, uh, it's called a deviation tool. And so like, let's say we're looking at a leg length and I want to click on the top of this leg and drag it over and put it right there at the top of the other leg. It's a little off. There it is. It's a little closer. Um, and you can see right away it calculates uh, the angle and the the difference for us. So, so hopefully everybody can see that is a uh, 17 millimeter difference uh, and it's the angle between those two points is 4.7 degrees. All right, that's all good. So let's do that same thing now uh, for the crest of the ilium. And uh, let me just guesstimate it here, right about there. Um, if I were doing this actually in a, a uh, uh, clinical setting, I would uh, blow it way up and make sure I'm right on the points. But I'm trying to go as quick as possible for you guys and try to make this. So that was a little off on that. Um, that was probably a little off on this one too. Uh, okay, let's say about there. All right, so. 34.4 millimeters of difference, which I think was pretty close to what we got on the other one, right? Fantastic, good. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, and um, let's again without blowing it up. I'm just guessing, but we're we're ballparking this for right now. Um, this one's saying 11.2, so. It's saying 23 millimeters of difference, and that's probably just because I'm not on the right spots. It's probably closer to here. Um, so, so let's just say that's 10.8 and 34.4, and 34 minus 10 is 24. So we're about that same number that we got, right? Everybody agree? That's um, I know I'm going through this quickly. Okay, but here's the issue <laughs> because. This a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? The the c squared on this particular one is um, and the a squared actually are not the same as the c squared on this one. See how much longer this line is than this line is, right there. So what? There's a new formula that we're actually trying to do. Um, and this is, it gets a little complicated, so you may want to get a scrap paper or something to write this down, honestly, uh, because I'm still having trouble with our therapists at the clinic getting this, this done right um, because it's such a big change. So one of the things we were looking at is like, wait, how come we put this guy in a 24 millimeter lift and he measures just extremely high on that side? Well, this distance here is not the same as this distance here. So what that's telling us is if I were to actually extend this line to the same distance as the other line, it actually would give me a much bigger deviation. So it's not the deviation we care about. What we care about is the angle. Um, and so when basically what's going to happen when this person sits down they're going to lose 5.9 degrees of angle on their pelvis. And if we take that 5.9, right, and basically look at this and drop that 5.9, it's going to be significantly different. And what we're really trying to do in our closest approximation for this, um, right, is because we want to get the spine straight when the guy sits, right? That's really the whole point. And you can see how deviated his spine is. And a lot of that has to do with he's, this is a standing x-ray and he's got an 18 millimeter leg length inequality. Um, so because he's deviating so far to that right side and we're showing a shortness on that right side, we want to correct that. We want to correct the right amount. So I want to get this crest of the ilium really as close to even as I can. So how am I going to do that? Well. I'm going to want to make the bottom angle equal to the top angle, right? I'm going to want to take this bottom angle, what he's sitting on. Um, I want the angle on the bottom to match the angle on the top. 
So here's where you got to do a little bit of math. Um, presently, this is 10.8 millimeters. I should probably write that down because I will forget. Um, so 10.8 millimeters on the bottom. I need to get it high enough that it will raise this 8.2 degrees. Um, I'm sorry, we'll raise this 8.2 degrees because the difference is the smaller side is over here, right? So what kind of lift will I need to do that? Well, here's how you figure that out. You take this bottom angle and you take that 10.8 and you go straight up, sorry, straight up until you get to 8.2 degrees right there. 15.1. It's going to take a total of 15.1 difference to make this even, is what it's going to make. But we already had 10.8. So let's, let's uh, say it's 10 and a half and 15, something in there. So I have to subtract 15.1 and subtract 10.8 from it to figure out how much of a lift I actually have to give this person. So I know that was complex, but if anybody followed that and can figure that out for me, what do you think the answer is? I'll let you round if you want to round. Anybody have a clue what that answer might be? Uh, I can't see all of you yet, so I'm still working on that. Let me... Uh, looks like Ed's got an answer. I'm going to, Ed. 19. 19. Where'd you get 19 from? Well, you said you added 8, uh, in your, on your bottom angle, you added eight, uh, 8 millimeters to that. So I just added uh, 10 and 8, 18. You said it equal okay. the angle yeah. above. Okay, so, yeah, so I know this is where it gets confusing. So what I did is I matched the angle, right? So you had 8.2 yeah. degrees and the 8.2 degrees. But this was 10.8, and I brought it to 15.1 to get there. So, what I, the the real the real calculation is take 15.1 and subtract 10.8. So, what's that going to be? What's 15.1 minus 10.8? I 15 minus 10. What's 15 minus 10? Five. Five. Right. It's a little less than five millimeters and that's actually all the lift this guy needs right and I know this is this is foreign and I'm gonna let this sink in for a second so we were down here and let me go back to the bottom 10.8 that's about where his bottom number was and at 10.8 like right now if he sat down the whole pelvis would drop 5.9 degrees right because he'd sit on a level surface Right? So that whole thing would drop. And what's going to happen is when you subtract that 5.9 degrees, this thing's going to drop way down. And then the question is, how much do I have to lift him to get the real difference in here? Um, and so that's why I need this bottom angle to match the top angle. And then I just need to figure out the difference between where they are now and where they ended up. I know that that's got to raise some questions. So, <laughs> so, so, give them to me if you have them. Um, all right, here we go. I'm going to go with Marion. Would you please raise the um the at the ischium so it becomes 8.2 degrees again? Sure. So I'm going to take this ischium and I want to match that degree, right? So I'm going yes. to bring it up. Sometimes it doesn't want to go exactly. Okay, I get the we'll idea. Say point three. Okay. We'll say 8.3. We'll say 8.3. Okay. Okay. So now, if I understand you correctly, I am taking this 15.1 and I'm subtracting the 10.8 where it was before. Because it was, we already had that 10.8 millimeters of difference, right? Yes. Um, and I need 15.1 millimeters of difference. Right, so that was, those were the numbers I was, that was my math, was yes. taking this 15.1, having written down already that it was 10.8 before, rounding them off, brought us to 5. I get yes. it. Yes, yes. 
it, it, well, four and a half, right? So you could go yes. five, you could go four, you could go either way. Okay. Uh, is what that rounds off to. And Thank that's you. exactly what made this guy level. Right? That's exactly. So what's really happening here, right, is when I have a big leg length inequality and I push this up four and a half degrees or whatever it is, right, um, this, because it's a wider measurement, is going to be pushed up further than this, which is a closer measurement, if you just measure distance. So basically 15.1 millimeters down here equals 34.4 millimeters up there, because this line is twice as long as this line is. And that's just Pythagorean theorem. Right, you can see these are right triangles that we're drawing here. Um, so it's, I need those two right triangles to be exactly the same in the angles that they project, the, these angles, right? And the way I can do that is to set that up down here to match up there. And then I know when they sit, right, because I basically need this line and this line to be parallel. And I just made them parallel. I'm going to let Greg ask a question if he has one. Greg. Well, um, so you're using the software to get the angle, so you don't have to plug in numbers into the right. So basically, so I don't have to do my player all that. Stuff. Right. I'm I'm letting it do the calculations for me. Okay. Got it. Um, so so look at this. If I really right. Um, it, let's say, because what were we doing before? We were subtracting those two numbers, right, and giving this guy a lift to equal the difference between the two, right, um, which was like a 25 millimeter lift, something like that, right, 24. So if I raise this up to 24, right, you can see how much steeper of an angle that is than this is. Now I don't have two parallel lines anymore. Um, and that's actually not even a 24 millimeter lift, right? A 24 millimeter lift because there's already 10 millimeters down here. So for me to actually bring that up to a 24 millimeter lift, I'm actually doing 24 plus 10. That would be 34. So that that's what I was doing to him. And that's way too much, right? That's way too much for, for that angle up there because uh, we wanted those two numbers to be the same. And now you're seeing this is an 18 degree angle and that's an eight degree angle. I just raised him 10 degrees too much is what I did. Uh, and so what, what we, the old way would have measured um, a 24 millimeter difference. We're now measuring it to be about a five millimeter difference. So it makes a huge difference, which is why we wanted to spend some time on this. Um, is that understanding the distance of these two apart really calculates the difference. Now, the great thing about this tool, it's very ca easy in calculating leg length because you're going to get a pretty accurate picture here if the, as long as the x-ray was taken properly, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. Um, but I want to show you another quick example of this. So give me just a moment as I eject this and put a different one in there. Um, and then I want to show you one more thing that we learned that I think is also super important. Um, so let's go ahead and give this, oh, I forgot to do my, my thing. Uh, doo, doo, doo. I'm like, why isn't this working? Because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Sorry for all the mess here. I'm going to just there we go, I needed to do that to, oh. And this is how you would open it in the program, by the way, if you put the, the CD in. Um, you just open up the program and click on the CD button and it should open right up. There you go. All right, so let's, what should show here, I mean, I'm just kind of playing with this. Um, okay, so, 
So here's a good example. This is um, actually one of our therapists. I mean, if you know Sheila, um, Sheila's great. We love Sheila. Um, so Sheila, let's go ahead and do this one more time just to show you. Uh, deviation tool. Sheila also has a pretty significant leg length inequality. Um, if you don't know her story, she was a dancer for many years and had to quit with all these issues. 17.9 um, millimeters, she's, and that's about where she is, about 17. That's where we've got her. Um, and you'll see if we did that same calculation up here at her hemi pelvis, we'll call that 15 and a half. And we'll call this just ballparking it again. I would be much more accurate normally. I'm just trying to speed things up. Um, so we'll say it's about a five millimeter difference, right? Uh, I don't know if anybody's calculated that, but if you the old way we would have done it is t 15 and a half, 10 and a half, so she's got a five millimeter difference. Um, what we want to look at though is, let's look at, and, and this is, actually a little bit off, so let me move that just a little bit so it's on, because um, this will make it easier for us. Um, okay, so 15 and a half and 10.1. Um, so let's say that's a five, five and a half would have been. But look over here, five degrees and 5.1 degrees. So essentially the same. <laughs> so what would have looked like a five millimeter hemi pelvis on her, is actually a no hemi pelvis, right? There is no structural hemi pelvis on this person, um, and and that's why you have to look at the degrees. Is those are actually almost identical. Now it's looking that way again because of the deviation. Now why is hers so much different than the last guy? Like the last guy was a much bigger difference, and the difference really is the shape of her pelvis. <laughs> The, the, this line is not twice as long as this line <laughs> because her, she's a woman, her ischial tuberosities are a little further apart um, and the crest of her ilium aren't so discrepant from her ischial tuberosities. So it's less of an issue, but there still is, it's calculating at five when it really is none. So let's actually look at that with her other image here. Give me just one second, there we go. So this is her with a lift in, um, let me do a little bit of, I made you all disappear and I wanna bring you back. Okay, um, so here she is wearing a lift. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our tools again and let's do our deviation tool. Uh, and again, let's, Ballpark this, and that's pretty close. Right? Uh, zero millimeters, zero degrees. So that's that's pretty close to being right on. The lift did its job. Uh, her spine looks a heck of a lot better. Uh, let's look up here. Um, yeah, this is not very far off either, is it? Uh, or I'm going to put it about there, and then I'm going to come down here and put that sucker. Yeah, it's again. I would blow it up typically. Um, I would do one of these and make sure I'm right on, and that one's a little bit off, and I'd bring it down a little bit um, like that to to measure. And what you're going to see is she has no hemi pelvis and no leg length. Right? That's that's what we all want to look like. <laughs> Right? That is is what we're doing, and that was actually with just a shoe lift. We didn't do anything to her pelvis. Her pelvis didn't get to all of a sudden grow. It's it's because the angles are the same. Any questions on that? Because that that actually is pretty demonstrative of why we need to look at angles and not actual measurements. Because these two X-rays were taken just moments from each other. Her pelvis did not grow five millimeters in those moments. I'm pretty sure. Um, all right, let me go back to Mr. Ed. Yeah, so let me ask you a question. So since we're going with uh, the degrees, can you, what if somebody has a fusion? Can you now put a lift in there? Um, well, the fusion certainly is above 
right above the hips. All of this is really looking at the pelvis itself. Well, I'm saying if they have a leg length inequality, can mm -hmm. you still, can you, because that's a big contraindication. You said if they have a fusion, don't put a lift in there, but if it's, so, if he's got a short uh, leg. I, I no, I, I guess that's <laughs> don't say don't put a, a lift in there. Like if somebody has a like this last guy who had a 18 millimeter difference, or Sheila who had an 18 millimeter difference, um, correct them. You may not be able to correct them the entire way. Yeah. Depending on where the fusion is, and that's where your call as a therapist starts to come in. Um, where was it fused? How was it fused? Uh, there are physicians that take the extra time and will will basically get rid of a scoliosis and fuse a spine straight. And then there are some that just fuse it in the position it's in right now, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to kind of see where the fusion is. Because if they took the time and did it straight, you can straighten them right up, right? The rest yeah. of the spine can move and they're fine. Um, so that's where you're, you're really looking at that fusion. And you're going to, you know, that's where, again, you as a therapist, you try a certain size, you see how their measurements go. When, if, when they start to go way off, you're, it's too much, right? Yeah. You're going to do a little trial and error. That's what a lift kit is for, gotcha. is to help you try different sizes, kind of see where it's at, uh, that sort of thing. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, sure. good. Good. Let me know if you come up with another one. I'll, I'll gladly sit there. Uh, let me go to Marion. Marion. Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Uh, my question is, is now, so, now this is in case they bring you, you a CD, but what if it's an actual film? Yes. You need to do some calculations. <laughs> um, that's where your math comes in. You actually need to measure the distance between these two points, right? And like, let's go back to the last x-ray. Um, let me just move you for a second and go to the other x-ray, right? Um, okay, so let's go back to this. Uh, I'm going to take, obviously I, I can't show you on a film because I don't have a film in front of me, but I can estimate it and tell you that these two points are about 18 millimeters apart, right? And these two points are about... 11 millimeters apart, right? Um, then you're actually going to have to take another measurement, <laughs> right, and go, okay. Uh, oh, not what I want to do. Just get that out of the way for right now. Um, and measure this and measure over to that, right? And that's 11.4. That's my A squared right? And that's my B squared. So there's a calculation that has to be done that says if I increase this to 17 millimeters, because you got to get an angle, right? You got to get an angle measurement. Um, and angle is measured by how far you move along the x-axis and how far you move along the y-axis, right? That 5.1 degrees comes from that. And there is a calculation for that. Um, I, I'll have to remember exactly what it is, but there you you can measure that. You could even take your goniometer and measure that, right? If you if you measure this angle, right? Because we have goniometers, that might be even the easier way to do it. Um, and then what you're going to have to do is figure out, okay, what's the ratio between this one and this one? And it's let's see. My C squared was 12, and so you're going to put 17 over 12. Um, I'll, you know what? Let me let me put that together because there it's going to get complicated. Um, but there is a formula, um, and I'll put 18. Let's see, 18 over 12 will give me the ratio of my C squared. Um, you might have to take a square root. Give me a second. <laughs> are are you getting your x-rays now on CDs? We're basically getting all of our x-rays on CDs. So I, I, I haven't done a lot of hand calculations. There is a way to do the hand calculation. Um, and I will personally send that to you, actually. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I'm writing it down right now. 
calculation. Because there is there is a formula, but I want to make sure I give it to you the right way. Uh, and calculation for x pellets. Okay. Um, so so yeah, there there certainly is a calculation that you can do uh, for that. And we will get that to you because it there it's it is a ratio. You're going to have to figure out a ratio to figure that out. But I will I will definitely get that to you. Thank um, you. You're welcome. And Greg. Greg, how you doing? Hello. Hey, Randy. Yes. Question regarding the setup for the film. Are you going to get into more detail on that? Yes, I am. Good, because I could see where if there was a rotation of one ilium forward, how that would change things as yes. well. Yes, 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 yes. So we are, are absolutely okay. going to get into that. Um, Great. Thank you're you. kind of leading me into my next part of my discussion. It's, it's a segue. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. It's nice <laughs> to have a plant out there. <laughs> thank um, you. So, all right. So, so. If you can get, if your films are coming in digitally, if you certainly can get that, in, and I certainly recommend it. It's much easier to store. It's much easier to, to print and do all of that for people. Um, and the software does a lot of the calculations for you. Uh, really solves your your issue um, if you can do that. Um, if not, then then you'll have to do some hand calculations. You do not have to do hand calculations on the leg length. The leg length still is the leg length, and it is set up for that. Not a big deal. Um, so, so if you've been correcting that, you're, you're still right on, don't change anything about leg length. Um, how we're looking at hemipelvis is changing. So, um, let us go to the next part of this discussion, and let's go back to this. Um, okay, so as Greg was, was telling us. Uh, setup is important, and I'm going to show you a reason why setup is important. Um, again, Travell does a great job of describing the right way to do it. Um, she actually puts a block between the feet. We just put a little template, right, that, that we've shown most people how to do. Um, the horizontal beam goes right to the top of the greater trochanter. Um, the person is flat up against a wall so that there is no rotation. They're, they're standing kind of pressed up against this, this wall. Um, she actually went as far to put a metal line, plumb line, hanging um, so that a perfect vertical will show up on the film as well. Uh, the, the digital ones, the, the, we, they've kind of solved that issue. We don't really need, because what could happen is the film didn't sit perfectly right and the film could shift, but that doesn't. Now you're going to a plate. It doesn't really shift anymore. Um, so that, that plumb line really isn't as necessary as it used to be. Um, and this mercury level, which was an awesome invention, but yes, she was super smart. But the, uh, but again, not necessary because we, they, they kind of standardized all of that stuff at this point. Um, but what is important, and something we, we found out recently, and I'll show you why, is here. I'm um, kind of reading this part. The tube focus should be at least 39 inches from the film, and preferably a distance of five feet or more. Right? You'll see that kind of in there, and then you're like, okay, but why? Why does it need to be so far away? Um, and so there is a reason why it needs to be so far away. And let me explain to you what that is. Uh, let's see, get out of here. Uh, yes, I know, thank you. Uh, we're gonna get back into that and open that up. So let's take a quick look at why that is so important. Importante. Yes, thank you. Okay, there we are. So this is a young man I'm currently treating. Um, I'm trying to see, there are two images here, there we go. Um, 
let's take a quick look at how big of a leg length inequality he has, right? So he's, uh, I think he's 13 right now. Um, let, again, ballparking it, 17 millimeters uh, of leg length inequality. Uh, let's see here. Again, I'm doing a very gross job, but the idea is there. Uh, cut down this attack. There we go. Um, so, 17 millimeters of leg length inequality. Um, 21, or we don't even care about those numbers anymore. 5.9 to 5.1. So it's only about a 0.8 degree difference, right? Even though if you subtract it, it would be like 12 or something. Um, there's only a 0.8 degree difference. So if I went to 5.8, that's close enough. 9.2. What was it before? Uh, 8.7. So yeah, half a millimeter of of hemi pelvis, um, but 17 millimeters of, of leg length inequality. Now, um, he has a six millimeter lift in his shoe um, that, that we had sent him down there with, basically a six millimeter lift just to um, see uh, what that did to him, because I, I could eyeball it and tell that he had a difference. I want to make him a little closer. Uh, and if we do that same tool, It went to eight. And you're like, wait a second, eight plus six isn't isn't what was the last number I had? Seventeen? Um, eight plus six is only fourteen. How come a six millimeter lift created that kind of difference? Well, <laughs> this place that we had sent him to, um, we went down there and and actually well I guess we didn't send him to there. He went there, and we had not seen their x-ray equipment. So we went down there, and their beam was too close. And um, their beam was only like 32 inches. And and so what happens, and that's when we, we go back to our, our friend Travel. We'll go back to her real quick. Um, that's where when she says at least 39 inches, because what happens when you get too close and you have a decent amount of difference um, between the two, uh, you end up amplifying the difference. So even though this picture says he has a 17 millimeter inequality, it's actually blowing that up. It'll actually make it look larger than it really is. Um, he's actually much closer to about a 14 millimeter inequality. And, and again, because the beam is so close, I would even double check that. Um, so we're not gonna use them for a lot of our x-rays because it, you really, the distance away from the film, as much as they're set up, like, so you can set them up perfectly, but if the, but if the, the beam is too close to the film, you're going, it's going to amplify um, your distortions. Now the nice thing with the new way that we learned it, <laughs> uh, let me click on this real fast, it does not change your hemipelvis measurement because that's a relative measurement of two points and if they're both amplified, they'll be amplified equally. Um, right, 3.3 and 3.5, that's close enough. That is no hemipelvis, no structural hemipelvis. But the, the leg length was measuring off on him uh, because it was a little bit too large. Any questions on that? Because that's a, another, that's, that's really going down to, you, you know, listen to Travel. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> um, check those pieces because, and, and trust your eyes, right? Trust. Trust a little bit of your measurement. If you put them in that lift and, man, they look too high, but that's what the x-ray says, eh, double-check the x-ray. <laughs> um, this is one that, that, what, that made it quite obvious that uh, this beam 
I was like, something's going on. Either he bent his knee or you know, something happened. And he's like, no, I didn't. They set me up just right. Da, 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 da. Um, so we ended up going down there. Uh, and, and this was all a result of the, the projector, the x-ray projector being uh, too close to the x-ray film, which is not something we had run into very often. All right, any questions on that? There, there's a physics reason why it blows it up. It always makes it larger. It doesn't make it smaller. Um, it has to do with the, the, what the incident angle is when it hits the, the leg and all of that stuff. So um, you guys are welcome to, to research the physics of that yourself <laughs> because it would take a long time to explain that. Um, but, but yeah, and I don't, you know, I haven't done physics since college. So questions. It looks like maybe Deb has an unanswered question, but she's not here with us. Uh, I'm trying to find your questions, but it's not popping up. Give me just a moment. Uh, there it is. Uh, actually, it's practice. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, Deb, there will be replay available. Um, that's a good question. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to put this on YouTube, so it'll be public uh, for anyone. Um, it is on the, um, I'm actually probably, uh, for some reason, I've gotten locked out of my neurosomatic educator, YouTube thing. So I'll probably end up putting this on the Center for Neurosomatic Studies YouTube channel, um, which will, you know, over the, probably the next either Wednesday or Thursday, I will be putting that out there for, for those of you if you wanted to reference this for later, um, because I know we went through some stuff pretty fast, um, and there's some, some math, and not everybody is left-brained. Um, we will have this for you to review. We think it's super important. Please review it. Um, please share it with other therapists you know are get, taking x-rays and looking at this uh, because it is, we feel, super, super important. All right. So I know we got 10 minutes left, but that's all I had for tonight. Um, let me answer a couple of questions that I see popping up here. Uh, Marion? I actually have two questions, but first one, when I look at the ischial foramen in this x-ray, Yes. It looks like, is, my, is there a flexion of the pelvis here? That looks to me more like inflare than it looks like flexion. Um, okay. Let's see, uh, let's see what that actually, we can check that real quick. That That's not super hard to check. I mean, and then again, like I said, I'm doing a rough, I have to hit shift, aren't I? Um, doing a rough estimate of this. Or speed, um, 68 millimeters, 60 millimeters. So this side is outflared, and as it outflares, this will get smaller. And that's why it has a larger measurement up here than it does over there. Um, is that that the right as you outflare this, it will appear narrower uh, on the X-ray. Yes. Whereas a flexion disorder, it narrows top to bottom. Um, a obliquity, it narrows left to right. Ah, yes, thank you very much. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Uh, and Greg. Hi, Greg. Hey, Hi. Randy, thanks. Yes. Um, I appreciate Marion's question because that cleared up something for me. Okay. Um, uh, just one, two questions then. Um, one, I notice on the femurs, and it looks around the ilium as well, the outline of the um, peripheral part of the bone is so white. Is that a normal finding? The outline finding? of the peripheral, you mean way out here? Like, like on the femurs, yeah. Is that, do you usually see it that white, or what uh, is that? It, it means really good bone density um, okay. is what that means. Okay. Um, he's, like I said, 13. Um, okay. 
he has really dense bones. <laughs> um, uh, he, he, that's what that means. Uh, is that his bo his you know the the outer layer of his bone, the compact layer of his bone, is very dense. Because mm -hmm. um, right, the whole film starts out as white. Right when right the reason why that zipper is so white, <laughs> right right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. Is because it completely blocked the X-rays. The metal completely blocked the X-rays, um, right? So you're okay. looking at a white shadow. Um, okay. So the whole film starts out white and turns dark where the X-rays hit it. So That's if it's white like that, that means all the X-rays were blocked by the bone, uh, yeah. um, which means it's a very dense bone. Okay. That means. That makes sense. And you'll see the compact bone on the outer layers is much more dense than the the cortical or the uh, Sorry, the cancellous, cancellous bone, cortical is oh. the outer layer. Cancellous bone yeah. in the middle um, is much less dense, so the x-rays go right through it. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and my other question then is, uh, um, I know you've discussed this in past uh, webinars. Um, I'm very interested now when clients and I see them, you know, in flare, out flare, that kind of thing. Like, do you tend to see with an out flare that you get more of a, of a retro version as opposed to an anti version or vice versa? Um, yes, yes, that's exactly right. Um, and again, that's that's not a must, that's a tendency. Um, okay, okay. Right? When the, like we just saw one today, like the, a lot of times when we see an in flare, the person, or an out mm -hmm. flare, sorry, the person's foot on that side when they lie down will, will kind of flop to the outside on an out flare. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. saw a patient today completely in flared on the side that her foot was flared out, <laughs> right? Those, because her huh. hip rotators were just so tight on that side. Uh, um, so, huh. so again, those are tendencies more so than musts. Um, okay. It is, is that they have a tendency to do it, but it doesn't necessarily have to do it. Okay. And can I share something I've been finding lately? Oh, absolutely. I'd love that. Um, when I have people standing um, facing away from me, and I go to the, you know, the lower angle of the PSIS and come up on it mm -hmm. to get a good solid um, specific point, good. I have them go to a single leg stance on okay. either side. Then I look to see do they stay level or do they shift. Mm. So I start to get a fe feeling about okay, they stayed level when they balanced on their left. It's whatever's happening is probably not coming from the left side. Of the, of the leg or whatever. So then I see them go to the right, and I see this more often. When they go to the right leg, they usually will get that anterior motion of the PSIS if they have an anterior tendency, and the, and the left side PSIS will posteriorly or downwardly rotate. Oh, interesting. And, and, I, and I see that more with the right leg. It depends upon what sport they're in or what they do, but that's more common for me these days. So do you think... That. Part of that is what you're measuring is the, the mobility of the SI joint? SI joint and what's going on at the, you know, glute med, um, whatever else kicks in, adductors, anything that kicks in, uh, maybe a weak glute med, um, whatever. It, and so it starts to give me an idea of maybe what's, what's weak, what's tight, what's short. And I've, that's been really helpful in guiding me lately. Very cool. Um, the... Have you correlated that? And I, I'm terrible at the names of these tests. Um, there, there's a name of the test where you hold on to the PSIS and have them do a forward flexion. Um, um, I don't know that one. I do a galaze sometimes, which okay. is where you're on the PSIS and, and then on the sacrum to okay. see if the, sac if the ilium's moving correctly over the sacrum. Okay. I've done that one, and I don't know that I've seen a correlation. I haven't really... Yeah, the, deep enough into the, this is something recently I've sort of been noticing. Okay, uh, it'd be interesting to me um, to do that, and I'm I'm going to try it now that you've said it. Um, yeah. But but to correlate that with that test because I've used that test before to 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 basically see right do both PSIS raise the same when they've been forward? Or ah, one right, raise right, a right. Lot right. I know what you're talking about. Yes. As they've been forward. Um, and see if that's a similar result to what you're getting with the raising of one leg. Um, with that to, to see mm -hmm. movement with that. Mm -hmm. But but I'm definitely going to try that tomorrow on people. So I will give it a shot and let you know what I find out. 
Well, thank you. And I will do what you're talking about. I know that I, I know what you're talking about. Where where they've been forward, and you're staying on the PSISs. Yes. And seeing if one if the PSS if PI, one's moving PSIS more than the yeah follows the sacrum equally. Right. Right. And if it uh, doesn't, if one's lagging, I usually think hamstring is straight right. on that and something side, is the is, lagging side. Sure. Sure. Something is stopping the movement. Uh, yes. From happening. And whether that's that's hamstring, right? There could be a couple other things, but yeah, same idea. Sure. Uh, well, I lo and I love those kinds of concepts that that to s explore those and to d discuss those maybe in the future. Sure, sure. That that's a great. I would love to. That's that makes for a webinar right there. I, we can talk awesome. about those tests and and what we think they mean and and how they correlate to our postural charts and and stuff like that. Well, thank you so much. And this was wonderful what you explained tonight. Yes, I really. Yeah. Got a lot and, out of this. Thank and you. hopefully, if you, and, and like there's that that free software that you can get um, and really do all these calculations for you, so you're you're more accurate in your measurements, and that's what we wanted. I'm on it. All right, great, Greg. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, and it looks like Marion has one more question. Let me go ahead and unmute Marion. Yes, that was very interesting what Greg brought up too. Um, my question is, is I have a um, actually a doctor who. I've been working with, and I was trying to teach him how to stand for the x-ray. He is so knock-kneed that if I place his feet in the proper position, his knees would overlap. So I know, and trying to get them so that one is not anterior to the other is like next to impossible. So I'm not sure what to do in a case like that. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because there are people you can't get to stand straight, and then there's a question of, well, do if he can't stand straight, do I want to correct him to standing straight? Because he's not going to be able to do that, right? Um, and, and so there's where you you're, you're playing a little bit, right? Um, mm -hmm. I would I would probably have him stand normally, whatever normally for him is, right? And get his feet as as approximated to equal to each other as you can, um, and you might correct to that, um, and then at, you know if through your therapy and walking around and doing all these things, he's he's able to correct some of that knock needness, and it starts to correct. You might have to adjust your lift, right? Okay. Does that make sense? Like you have to you have to. To meet them where they are, right? <laughs> yeah, well, like this is where he is, and this is what he can do. So I need to correct to that because what are we really trying to do? We're trying to get the spine as straight as possible, right? And and yeah. the hips as level as possible. Well, that's interesting you say that because I positioned his feet as close together as possible so that the knees would just barely, you know, meet. Okay. And then um, I got them so that they were in an even even plane. One was not anterior to the other. I stood back and looked at this man, and he immediately bent over to the right. And I mean, he, he was like the Leaning Tower of Pisa from his waist up over to the right. And I thought, well, that didn't do much. Right. Right. And so, so if we want to get him there, do we need to raise that right side to mm. to correct for that? Well, we're coming down in the spring because he can't come down before then. So, okay. I won't, actually, he's in Massachusetts, and I'm in Florida. I just visited him here, so. I won't get to work on him before that, so we'll probably be in together. Well, then I'd love solving it with you. I think it'd be a great, okay. great little thing to solve. Okay, we'll work on that together. All right, I look forward to seeing you in the spring. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there, uh, let me go. That, is that a new question? Oh, that's just a thanks from Deb. Um, okay. Uh, well, thank you, Deb. Thanks for joining us. Um, I will then uh, get this posted. Um, we'll probably send out uh, a another quick constant contact to let you guys know that we did post it, um, and and get that out there so that, that kind of send you the link uh, so that you can get there once we get that sent up, may put up. All right. Well, thanks for joining us and enjoy the rest of your evening. Talk to you later. Bye.